the the real way uh, it would be really difficult to cut off access from a given region in Syria without completely disabling the internet in that region, and that is even beyond Mark Zuckerberg's power. Uh, the issue is, though, that you screen for these accounts. Literally, it's not particularly hard. You keep a, a DOD or a Department of Homeland Security, CIA, whoever, whatever alphabet soup you'd like. You keep a liaison with you at corporate headquarters. They look through all posts in a given language, Farsi, Pashtun, Arabic. Uh, they look through posts in this given language. They use, they run the algorithm that the NSA already has, and you immediate del- immediately delete and shut down accounts. It would be literally if you put the right amount of work into it, and then this wouldn't be particularly expensive. Joe, are they already doing this? Uh, Joe, are they already doing this surreptitiously? Absolutely not. Because ISIS is useful. ISIS creates instability. ISIS keeps the Gulf states on their toes. It keeps Syria on their toes, who for some reason, actually I can tell you exactly why, because we want to build a pipeline. It keeps Syria under pressure. It keeps them all... Joe, you're you're actually now going from your field of expertise to politics, which obviously you're deeply enmeshed in because you're you're taking time out of a busy day to listen to a a talk show and to call in to Michael Savage and all that. You're saying the government is purposely letting ISIS exist? Why else? It wouldn't be hard. We we, we have the permit for this. We we bullied Facebook, Twitter, etc. to cooperate in... uh, Verizon, we, we bullied any number of tech companies into cooperating with NSA uh, dragnet spy programs. Why aren't we doing it for this? Clearly, this is not a matter of, this is guilt by omission, at least in my opinion. Clearly, we have the power to take command and do something about this, but we haven't. So the this same is- President Obama, who tells our U.S. Air Force not to bomb uh, a, a, a convoy of oil trucks, and tells them not to blow up pickup trucks during a victory parade, and tells Air Force pilots to come back with full bomb loads on bombing missions, is telling us, telling people in cybersecurity to look the other way and let ISIS plot their next attack? Maybe not tell them to look the other way, but not taking any action. So there are people in the government who are listening to this show who would love to get up and scream that they know they know what's going on. They could stop the next attack, but they're being prohibited from doing so by higher-ups. Isn't that what you're implying? Yes, essentially, yes. So we're, the war on terror is a fraud, in other words. To you, a man who runs a, a computer, a, a tech company, who obviously is super brilliant to have built this company. You have a background in the field. I probably, you probably started out, what, as a programmer yourself? No, my background's in biochemistry. But uh, you know, <laughs> That's did. even better. That's even all right. So you went from biochem to tech. You have a successful company. So you're a super thinking person. You actually believe the war on terror is a fraud. In its current iteration, absolutely. Okay. So what's the, the so wait, Joe? Wait a minute. You're probably freaking out a lot of listeners because they're listening to every word you're saying. And, and as uh, as I am, what's the end game of Obama and his minions? What do they intend? What do they want, the, the enemy within? What are they doing? Well, first off, you have to understand that these people long ago, look at European leaders, look at the European Union, look at their leaders. They long ago stopped caring about the will, the well-being of their people. First things first, we have to understand that our government has betrayed us. It has been betraying us consistently for over a decade. Our government does not represent our interests. They represent certain other interests. Instability in the Middle East is a good thing. It keeps the Saudis buying weapons. It keeps the Emiratis buying weapons. It keeps them distracted from the Israelis. It keeps it keeps the Sunnis and the Shiites at each other's throats. ISIS is still viewed with, I guess, kick gloves by the Gulf states because they're concerned about an ultimate showdown with Iran, the growing Shiite power. They're still concerned about this, but they still see ISIS as a potential tool to use in this. Because Iran has been very successful. Donald Trump himself said it. If Iran was a stock, I'd buy it yesterday. And he's right. They've been extremely successful with all of their efforts in the Middle East. This Joe, I'm a, supporter of, I'm a supporter of Israel, Joe, for obvious reasons. Is Israel also, in a way, not taking on ISIS? ISIS isn't Israel's problem. It distracts Israel's enemies. Granted, I, I, I love Israel. Israel is fantastic. They are brilliant. They are what I wish America could be. 
ruthless and subversive when dealing with their enemies at the same time. They give no quarter and they ask none. They are brutally effective at pursuing the interests of their people. And that's what I think gets so many leftists so riled up about Israel, is when they look at it, oh, how terrible, how terrible. Because Israel doesn't play this uh, internationalist kind of game. They don't. Because Israel, Israel is a sovereign nation with a national identity, and that's, of course, anathema to the New World Order. But why is Israel not engaged in fighting ISIS, is what I keep asking. Why would you fight someone that's got literally all of your enemies all tied up in the knots and not paying attention to you? Off the back. <laughs> oh, God, Joe. Joe, I think there's more to your background than you're letting on, Joe. Oh? Joe, is there anything else you'd like to tell my audience is probably quaking in their boots right now? Because what you're saying is, is quite revolutionary. Could you stay on the line for one more minute? I must conclude this hour with you, Joe. You've got me really on the edge of my seat. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O. In plain English, Trump was right. We need to black out the Internet in terrorist-infested uh, areas, period. That's what he said. I went beyond that. And I've gone to the next level of uh, analysis. And it's very simple. Michael Savage says, draft tech workers to help defeat ISIS. Trump said, shut off the Internet in terrorist-infested areas. Now, that would require uh, the greedy buccaneers who have capitalized on the Internet, which they didn't create. Let me remind you, Bill Gates did not invent the Internet, and it was not Al Gore either. The Internet was a product, if I'm not mistaken, of the U.S. Defense Department many decades ago. Am I right about that? I think it was developed by the, by the U.S. Def Defense Department with taxpayer money. They wisely, being the uh, buccaneers that they are, found a way to make a buck off someone else's genius. And the rest is history. The fact is, they owe the country, they owe the country a huge, huge debt. Bill Gates... For all of his great works, all of his liberal foundations and all of that, needs to step up to the plate and help us with national security interests. Need I say the same about Mark Zuckerberg or the other tech giants, Twitter, for example, who live only for their self-aggrandizement and self-profit? Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Any refugee coming to the United States, some of them victims of terrorism themselves, will continue to get the most intensive scrutiny of any arrival. Liar. You are such they a They go liar. through up to two years of vetting, including biometric what screening. What about your vetting? How come no one looked into your background? Into the fiancé visa program under which... Uh, look, I can't listen to this anymore. The female Muslim who came into San Bernardino came in right through the the walls that Obama's gang of old white men created. He's a liar through and through. His own Department of Homeland Security chief, who should have been fired after San Bernardino, admitted today before Congress that terrorists can exploit the system. So who does he think he's kidding? I guess he thinks he's kidding you. The trolls who don't like Michael Savage. Why do you listen to the show if you don't like me? Why do you waste my time... Just listening to me waste my time. On um, the uh, Facebook page, I posted the WND article, Michael Savage, just came out minutes ago, draft tech workers to help defeat ISIS. And some of the comments are these. I believe Joe is one of the most intelligent speakers I have ever heard in radio. I'm glad you took that call. Another one says, please expound on what Joe said, Michael. ISIS is useful, he said. Michael, explain who benefits from ISIS. Okay, let's do that in this hour, in addition to talking about this. Because there's a reason they're still existent. You, defeated, you could have defeated Hitler in less time than Obama's war on terror. And Bush's war on terror. Hitler was defeated in less time when we had real patriots sitting in the Oval Office. Another one says we should make IT specialists an elite force with high honor, same as Navy SEALs, Green Berets, Delta Force, etc., I don't think so. I think that taking bullets in combat is much different. 
I think you could have divisions within the SEALs and Berets and Delta Force, which you already have. There's no question in my mind that they already probably have the highest level of IT specialists working there. How, do you, how can they go out on a field mission without having an ITS, IT specialist with them? How could they? Okay, so these are some of the comments, and I can see I'm getting the best uh, callers. This tech guy, Joe, you're talking to sounds knowledgeable about the tech world and politics and may want to talk to him often and maybe get Joe to talk to Trump as an advisor. Yeah, that's a good idea. The next time that Trump comes back on the show, I'll mention it. Michael, listen to me. He writes, David Schweitz writes, The Obama open border people have already conscripted the IT mercenaries at Facebook, Zuckerberg, and others. They are the useful idiots of today's war. Globalist utopia. This war has been waging since the 60s and before. And he goes on about Marxism and good and evil. And I don't want to go into it because it's too esoteric. Every post and ping from ISIS should be met with a smart bomb, someone writes. That's an easy answer. Yeah, put out the entire neighborhood, I guess you could say that. But that would be like saying that if a kid from a, a bad neighborhood does something bad, you should burn the neighborhood down with everyone in it. That's crazy. Can't do that. Doesn't work that way. If you care to chime in on this topic, well, let's see now, 855-407-282. Got some sound I want to play. Here is the great man, the great leader, the great leader himself. you got to hear this one now in clip five, trying to draw us all together and give us courage. Listen to 05. One of our greatest weapons against terrorism is our own strength and resilience as a people. Doesn't he sound like that he means That means staying vigilant. If you see something suspicious, say something to law enforcement. Hold it. it I see something suspicious on the stage right now. Hey, ho, ho. I see something suspicious at the head of DHS. Whoa. Now go on. The next, can you, you, can, you have to start it from the top. I know we don't have the computer technology. Oh, good. We got new equipment. <laughs> go ahead. Try the allies that. in this fight are each other. Americans of all faiths and all backgrounds. And when Americans stand together, nothing can beat us. Oh, Most of please. all, we cannot give in to fear oh, you're such a... or change how we live our okay. lives. I can't listen to it. I'm getting nauseous. I feel like I just ate bad fish. I feel like I ate 12-day-old tuna fish in a Taco Bell when I listen to him. I get indigestion. This man who has divided America from the day that he even started to think he was taught how to divide and conquer. And look how good he is at it. He just used Ryan the Beard to get a $1.1 trillion budget. Ryan will now be called Obama's Beard. Remember that. You always refer to Paul Ryan as Obama's Beard. It's as simple as that. Now, here is the same day Obama's telling us that there's no way they're going to get in and hurt us. Here is the most incompetent man in the history of, of uh, national security, Jay Johnson, in clip number six. Listen to this, and, and, and you're going to get sick. Listen to it. We do have to be concerned about the possibility that a terrorist organization may seek to exploit our, our refugee resettlement process. That is true of this country. That's true of every other country that accepts refugees. He's a comp incompetent. He's just an incompetent yes man, a schmuck who never deserved this job. They pu pulled this moron out of Wall Street, and they gave him the HS, the moron doesn't know the first thing about national security. A 16-year-old kid who fought in a street gang would know more about national security than this putz. Listen to the next one. This is the man heading up DHS who just failed us in, in uh, wherever, in um, San Bernardino. Listen to seven now. There are a number of investigations by the FBI of potential plots, uh, those who may be involved in uh, plotting or planning terrorist acts. Um, and as uh, I've said, the new environment uh, that we are in uh, uh, includes not only the potential for terrorist-directed, but terrorist-inspired attacks. Why is this man in his job? Why don't they demand he be fired today? Why? Ask the beard why. Ask the beard who just gave the deceiver, the snake, $1.1 trillion to spend as he will, a kid in the candy store. Ask Paul Ryan why he doesn't ask that Jay Johnson be forced to step down. But wait, it gets even better. Jay Johnson, who just failed us and, and is now doing the, the media tour, they sent him out on a media tour to cover up his failure. He goes on CNN, Fox News, 